First off, I'd like to ask to stay anonymous. Due to my line of work, my job could very much be in jeopardy if this ever got traced back to me. I understand that being secretive like this doesn't help build confidence in what I'm about to tell you, but I swear it's true. I work as a location scout for a popular survival-based reality television series. My job is to find an area that will allow for not only seclusion, but also has great scenery and is accessible enough that we can get our crews in and out safely, as well as the participants on the show. The location has to still be remote enough that the players feel alone and are dependent on their own survival methods. We also don't want to catch lights from civilization or have an area with a lot of air traffic. Anything that could detract from the idea of the show and the contestants being alone. I also have to find areas where there are enough resources for participants to survive on. Edible vegetation, timber for building, game animals, etc. We don't concern ourselves too much with medicinal plants because if the person became dependent on that for survival, well, our medical team would insist on pulling them anyways. This is all written in their contracts and they are fully aware of what they are getting themselves into. One of the areas we were looking at for an upcoming season was in the forests of eastern Texas. Most people don't think of Texas when it comes to remote wilderness, but if they were actually there, they would be surprised. We found an area that had everything we needed. It was a section of national forest that was bordered by a waterway. There were some old logging roads for access, but the nearest point of civilization was a small campground that was about 12 miles away. Beyond that was at least a 30 minute drive before you hit so much as a gas station. Our production crew could use the campgrounds as a base of operations, and that would guarantee no locals or unwanted visitors would accidentally stumble onto our location. The setup seemed perfect. Before I give my final sign off on a location to the producers and director, I like to actually go into the area myself and camp for a couple of days. You can't just look at a place to determine if it's a good spot or not. You have to actually immerse yourself into it a bit. I call it my quality control check. That's when you notice the little things that you may not have picked up on before. Like the sound of late night traffic or trains or air traffic at 3 in the morning. Things like that. I don't know how many times a location seemed perfect until that final check. I pulled up at the campgrounds on a Thursday. It was about noon and I had plans of staying in the area until the following Sunday. That would be enough time for me to make my final decision and notice any unexpected hiccups that might cause production problems. The camp host stayed in a motorhome at the entrance to the camp, but other than that, the grounds were actually pretty empty. There was one guy on a motorcycle, probably a cross-country biker, and a couple in a tent. I knocked on the RV and an older man swung the door open. I introduced myself, told him my business being there, to which he didn't seem to really pay attention to or understand. I let him know the area I was going to be camping at. His eyes suddenly jerked up at me. Aren't you going to be camping here in the park? He said as he looked over towards the direction of the couple's tent. I told him no, I preferred to rough it out by myself. For several minutes he seemed to almost insist I stay in the park, trying to sell me on the amenities which really didn't amount to much more than a bathroom and a water hydrant. I assured him I'd be just fine without those luxuries and asked if I needed to worry about anyone messing with my vehicle if I left it on one of those old logging roads. Nah, he said, you won't have to worry about anyone going out there. Heck, this is the most people that's camped here in the past month. You sure you won't change your mind and join us? It started to make sense to me why he was being so insistent about me staying there in the campgrounds. They never got any traffic. While this was unfortunate for him, This was making this location an even better possibility for the show. I just smiled and told him thanks as I crawled back into my jeep. I parked my jeep at the dead end of one of those old logging roads. With my gear in tow, I headed towards the river. The spot I had chose to set up camp at was a small peninsula that the river wrapped around. There was a small opening there between the tree line and the river's edge. It was about a 30 minute hike through the forest from where I parked my vehicle but when I walked out into the clearing, I couldn't have been more pleased. The spot looked like it was taken straight out of a painting. Perfect for a campsite and perfect for production value. The opposite bank of the river was a high rock bluff that seemed to create a chamber around the area. You really felt completely alone, and I was. 
The first night I had a difficult time falling asleep. I had to adjust to the sounds of the area, which were mostly drowned out by the sound of the water. A small thunderstorm passed through early on in the night, but after it had moved on, I fell asleep. The next morning, I woke up and went to answer the call of nature. I was at the edge of the water with my back towards my camp doing my business when a loud snap rang out from somewhere behind me. It sounded like a shotgun blast. I craned necked around to try and see what was going on, but couldn't see anything. I quickly finished relieving myself and went towards the direction I had heard the limb snap. There wasn't any wind or anything, and the snap happened very quickly, like how a person would do it. About 30 yards behind my camp, I found a freshly broken limb. The limb was about 4 inches thick, and at the break, a piece about 4 feet long now dangled. I pulled the piece the rest of the way off. To my surprise, when I tried to break it, I couldn't. I didn't hear anyone, and I didn't see any tracks from bears or anything, but that was my guess. It was probably a bear. The rest of the day I spent hiking around the area, taking video and photos to show the head honchos, documenting the local wildlife sign and edible plants I found in the area. I never found the bear that snapped the limb, but I did find a couple more limbs similar to that one, and a small tree that had been twisted and broken near the top. Probably a bear trying to climb it or pull it down to get at some leaves. But I made note of it for the show. We make notes of any possible sign of predators in the area so we can be prepared in the event of an emergency. The next night, I woke up suddenly from a deep sleep. I wasn't sure what had woken me up, so I just laid there listening for a moment. Everything seemed quiet. I could hear the water, but the sounds that usually lay behind it weren't there. Had that bear wandered into my camp? The only bears in the area would have been small black bears, but any bear can be dangerous and I had found those snapped limbs in the twisted tree. That's when the loudest and strangest sound rang out through the air. It was like a long, drawn-out whoop, like an owl might make, but way louder and much, much longer. Where did it come from? I grabbed my light and slid on my boots as I exited my tent. I was walking around my tent, scanning the tree line with the flashlight, when I hear this bloosh in the river. I wheeled around, panning the light along the surface of the water, and could still see the ripple spreading out. Then, just at the edge of the light beam, I catch a huge rock about the size of my head hit the water. It had come from the top of the rock bluff. I shined my light up towards the top, and where I guesstimated the rock had come from, but couldn't see anything. I shined the light around a little more, and then turned it off. No sooner had the beam gone out than something at the top of the cliff let out a roar like I had never heard before. If you could imagine the sound of a man screaming and the roar of a lion, or maybe what King Kong would sound like in person, that's what this thing sounded like. I could feel it in my chest. In all my life, all the remote places I have scouted and camped, I have never felt that afraid. What the hell made that sound? What the hell in Texas could make a call like that? I had heard cougars, bears, lions, elephants, just about anything you could think of in my line of work, but never had anything rattled me so much as whatever that was had. I stoked up the fire and threw a couple of logs onto it to get it good and blazing. The fear I had as a child of the dark had suddenly returned, and I felt safety in the light. I looked at my phone. It was three in the morning. It wouldn't be that long until daylight. I started thinking about what I should do. Should I forget about this place? How could I sign off on a location when there was something out there that I couldn't identify as a threat or not? Then I started thinking. Had it thrown that rock into the river? Were those limb breaks caused by whatever had made those calls? Impulsively, I wanted to just get out of there. But did I really want to hike back to the jeep in the dark? I decided to wait things out until morning. But there was no way I was going to fall back asleep. About an hour had passed before I heard the first sound of sticks popping as something moved through the woods behind me. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end, but I reminded myself that I was just spooked and it could be anything. Every five to ten minutes or so, I'd hear some more movement. Whatever it was, it was keeping its distance and wasn't coming closer. Even though I thought it could be nothing more than a deer, I was still relieved by it not getting any closer. 
That relief came too soon. There hadn't been any movement for about 20 minutes. I remember checking the time on my phone again and seeing that it was still about an hour before first light. That's when I heard sticks popping again under the weight of something stepping on them. Only this time it was close. Maybe 30 feet or so behind my tent, just inside the trees. I mustered up some courage and stood up. I faced the woods with my back to the fire. The flames were just bright enough to reach the trees, but not strong enough to penetrate the shadows between them. There, between two trees that formed sort of a V-shape, were two eyes. They glowed the same color as the fire. Something was standing behind those trees watching me. At first, my mind didn't really process what I was seeing. I went through the mental database of animals it could be, deer, raccoons, even that black bear that had started fading from my thoughts. That's when I realized that these eyes were different. They were forward-facing like ours, but they had to be huge. They were big, and they were high off the ground. If I had to guess, I would say at least eight feet up off the ground. What was I looking at, or more importantly, what was looking at me? I watched as the eyes blinked and then were gone. I stood there for a minute waiting to see them again, but whatever it was had left, and it didn't make a sound when it did. At this point, a wave of terror ran over me, and I wanted nothing more than to leave. I would have probably abandoned my camp and ran straight for my jeep had I not known that whatever was watching me was between me and the road where it was parked. Why was I so afraid? This thing didn't seem to want to hurt me. It hadn't attacked me or anything. At this point, I didn't even know what it was. But for some reason, it frightened me straight to my core. It made me feel like a child wanting to yell for my mom and turn all the lights on. I felt completely helpless and embarrassed at the same time. These emotions I was having had no basis. Nothing had happened that should make me feel like I was in any danger, but I did. I remember thinking to myself, now you know what the rabbit feels like whenever it sees the fox. That was it. I had had enough. I wasn't giving in to fear, but if I couldn't shake the feeling, I was just going to pack it up and force myself to leave. After packing up my gear, I knew it would be daybreak by the time I got to the jeep. I snuffed the fire out, got my bearings, and headed out towards the road, straight through the area where that thing had been watching me. As I got to the trees where I had seen the eye shine, I reached an arm up to try and gauge how high up the eyes were. This thing was even taller than I thought. I ignored the sinking feeling in my stomach and pressed on into the darkness. I clicked on my flashlight and kept it pointed in front of me as I worked my way between the trees towards the logging road. The woods were still quiet, and the only thing I could hear was the sound of my own steps as the noise of the river faded away behind me. In my haste to leave, I had thrown on my pack with a twisted strap, and it was starting to bother me, so I stopped to straighten it out. When I stopped to adjust the strap, something else off to my right took a couple more steps and then stopped. Was I imagining things? I pulled my pack back on and began to walk again. This time I paid attention, and sure enough, it sounded as if someone were walking with me, off to my right, maybe twenty yards away. I saw a fallen tree up ahead. When I stepped up on the log, I froze instead of stepping down off of it. It was enough to trip up whatever it was paralleling me, and it took a couple more steps and then stopped suddenly. My heart started pounding heavily as I stepped off the log. This thing was still around, and now it was following me to my vehicle. I kept walking, starting to feel anxious as I listened to the steps in unison with my own. It was tormenting, but I had no choice other than to keep going. It got light enough I could see without the flashlight, but I struggled to turn it off. I shined it off towards the right where the steps had been coming from, but all I could see were trees. As I kept walking, I realized I was no longer able to hear the thing. Had it given up? Now that it was becoming daylight, had it lost its courage? I didn't care, I just wanted to get out of there. As I got closer to the logging road, I started hitting the button on my key fob until I heard my alarm chirp. I could see the parking lights blink twice through the tree cover. I was so relieved to be back at the car. The show would just have to find a new area, there was no way I was going to recommend this place. I got to the jeep and threw my pack in the back. When I closed the back hatch, I noticed what looked like imprints of long fingers in the dust on my back window. I held up my hand and these were much larger than mine. I climbed into the vehicle and hit the door locks. 
I turned the key halfway, expecting the car not to start, but the engine fired right up, thankfully. I wasn't stuck in a horror movie after all. I placed my foot on the brake and engaged the gear. Whether it be instinctively or just muscle memory from driving, before I took off I looked in my rearview mirror. There, at the tree line behind me, illuminated by my brake lights, was a monster. My mind tried to process what I was seeing, but I already knew. It was huge and muscular, covered in hair. The eyes glowed in the taillights just like I had seen in the firelight back at camp. I was staring at a Bigfoot. No sooner had I realized or accepted what I was looking at, I turned away and walked back off into the woods. I took my foot off the brake and hit the gas. I kept looking back in my mirror expecting to see it again, but I didn't. I can't explain what I consider the irrational fear or why I felt like I was in danger, but no one will ever be able to convince me I wasn't. Two weeks later, I was scouting in an entirely different location and never had the slightest feeling of fear other than when the image of the creature would creep into my head. And no, I didn't sign off on the location in Texas. I told them there were too many black bears in the area and too much traffic from the locals. I didn't have much time looking at the Bigfoot, and I certainly wasn't thinking about making mental notes of the details, but what I can tell you is that it was tall, probably 8 to 9 feet, Hair covered the entire body except for around the eyes. The eyes were big and reflected back light like an animal. The head was slightly pointed like a gorilla's. I just remember how massive it looked with really broad shoulders and you could see the muscle definition under the hair. I hope that helps and maybe something from my own encounter can help you guys find it. But I have to admit, I think you're crazy for looking for it.